Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to tonight's episode of the Daily Mass Community Huddle. Sending peace and love all around the world. Say salam where you're from. Inshallah ta'ala will get started in a few moments. Whether we hit 100 people first or we hit the top of the hour, whichever comes first, we will begin. The score right now, I think, is 4-2 in favor of hitting the number first. Good stuff, guys. Share it. Start a, start a watch party. Get your peeps on the session. Let's begin. Teach those latecomers a lesson. <laughs> They'll never forget. Our first salam of the evenings. Hadra wa alaikum as salam. Salams, where you're from. If you've got Nurin from Dhaka, if you've got, yeah, our fun poll today is do you drink your milk, your tea with milk or without milk? We got Ireland. Hold on, somebody from Ireland. Shahnoor in Ireland, wa alaikum as salam. Sakallah khairan. Faiza in Dallas, wa alaikum as salam. Rosa, thanks for turning in every day, wa alaikum as salam. Fartoon, Nairobi also tuning in. Nabila tuning in, wa alaikum as salam. Mo Mez from Japan. Japan's awesome. Ahlan wa salam. Where are you from in Japan, Mo Mez? Abu Abdullah, wa alaikum as salam. UK, Faziha, welcome. Faziha again, wa alaikum as salam. Asma. Wasafa, sponsored by Wasafa in Hungary. Wa alaikum as salam. Mukhtar in Aussie land. Wa alaikum as salam. Shumayla in Dallas. Thanks for tuning in every day. Hussein in Italy. Allah keep you guys safe. Amin. Wa alaikum as salam. You ba. You ba. From Seattle. Salam. <laughs> Your mama says mostly tea, mostly without milk. If you want to tap your inner childhood memories. Nurin, tea with milk, without milk. <laughs> Asma, the biggest visionary fan ever. Ahra wa salam. Ihsan, Moroccan. Netherlands, wa alaikum as salam. Oh, Momez is from Kobe. Kobe, land of the stakes. Kobe, Japan. Hasina in New York, Queens. I visited Queens long time ago. Eunice in Texas, wa alaikum as salam. Omar says, met you in Kuala Lumpur. Nice tea with milk. Tabida, wa alaikum as salam. Tawfiq in Egypt, wa alaikum as salam. Where are you from in Egypt, Tawfiq? Minara in London. Shaquille in UK. Shazard in Trinidad. Yunus says, no tea for me. All right, guys, we're at 86. We haven't hit 100. Oh, we went to 90. Are we going to hit 100 before the top of the hour or not? It's 97 now. Oh, 99. Oh, and we hit 100 before we hit the top of the hour. That was close. Let's get started. Take one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ma wa la. Amma ba'd. Good morning, Vietnam. Welcome to today's session. We're talking about perfectionism. So we start off in the seerah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, speaks about Ramadan fasting. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ramadan fasting, fasting actually, you know, whenever um, people are asking, what is fasting? And you say, to abstain from food and drink from, uh, from, from Fajr until Maghrib. In fact, when fasting was first um, ordained and commanded, it was um, abstaining from food and drink in marital um, relations from... Um, from Aisha till Maghrib. Meaning that the only time you had to eat and drink and marital relations was between Maghrib and Aisha. And if you know, the time between Maghrib and Aisha is, um, is something like an hour and a half. So and that was the fasting. It was an hour and a half to eat, drink, or drink water, marital relations, all of that stuff. And Aisha time would come and then fasting would begin the next day. 
Now the companions, and these are companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reveals in the Quran, this is in Surah, this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 187, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَفَا عَنْكُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah knows that you used to deprive yourselves. كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ You did khiyana on yourselves. فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَفَا عَنْكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy upon you and forgave you. The point here, tonight's, um, tonight's reminder is about perfectionism. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when these companions weren't able to do the fast from Isha till Maghrib the next day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response to them was with mercy and tawbah and forgiveness and that they come back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easier for the companions, for all of us, that the fasting is from Fajr till Maghrib and not from Isha till Maghrib time. Perfectionism. So perfectionism is, <clears throat> it's this silent killer. It, it, you know, it kills you before you even get started. And this is how perfectionism works. So let's suppose you want to clean your room, right? You probably have a dirty room around you right now. So you probably said to yourself, one day I will clean my entire room in one shot. And because you cannot perfectly execute that, like clean the whole room in one shot, you decide to do nothing. If your room is clean, then what about your closet? What about your closet? <laughs> you tell yourself, I'll only clean it when I can do it all in one go. Let me give you another example. Let's suppose you say, oh, I want to write a book. I want to write this ebook. I want to do some, you know, something like that. And you tell yourself, one day I will sit down and do all of it in one shot and and then it doesn't happen. Because you can't do all of it in one shot, you tell yourself, I'll never do it. And, and, and it's very subtle. This is the perfectionism. I have to do everything perfectly or I will do nothing at all. Or somebody will say, and this comes for a dua, um, as um, one sister who recommended this, this topic tonight, she said that what if I have this big long dua list? It's like, hey, I've got 15 pages of duas. And because you want to make dua for everything, you end up saying, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to sit down for 45 minutes and read through my whole list. So you don't make those duas e either. Let me give you one more example. Let's suppose you signed up for a class and right now there's lots of amazing online classes. You probably signed up for something and here and there and then you miss one of the classes and then you tell yourself, yeah, somebody how it says this is so me. Who else does this resonate? Because we're all like this. I'm telling you, even if you're not like this in one area, you're like this in some other area. Um, another example is, so you have a class and you tell yourself, I'm going to do all the lessons and every day I'm going to tune in and I'm going to sit for one hour and I'm going to do this, this and that. And then um, you miss one day, perfectionism smashed. And then you tell yourself, okay, I'm done. <laughs> this wasn't perfect. It didn't come out perfectly. So um, halas, that's it, no more. So this is what perfectionism does for us. It just kills our dream. We have this standard that everything has to be perfect every day. And if it's not perfect, then we will do nothing or, or we will end this. And so I will talk about that today, inshallah ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fasting and says Allah wishes ease for you يسر, and does not wish hardship for you. And so when you're approaching this, you've got to approach it, this perfectionism, you've got to approach it with that attitude of I want to make progress and if I don't, then it's okay, I can tune up tomorrow. So I wasn't perfect today, I wasn't perfect this week, it's okay. And mercifully come to the next day and the next day and just say, hey, just because I wasn't perfect yesterday doesn't mean I can't be perfect. Um, I can't be perfect today. 
So here's some, some uh, practical tips on how to deal with perfectionism, how to deal with perfectionism, things like, like I said, cleaning your closet or writing a book or finishing a class that you've um, purchased and it's just sitting there, the videos or something like that. And those kind of things or your dot list that's so long that you don't have the time to go forward. Um, focus on... Now, this is the advice that I got, and it didn't actually fully work, but it does work, and I'll tell you how it works. So this was the focus is on um, making progress versus getting it done. So instead of telling yourself, I'm going to focus on f completing this, focus on um, making progress on this. Instead of focusing on completing this, um, focus on making progress. And it sounds nice. But in practicality, um, it might not work. So this is how I do it. Or when I'm in the right mood because I totally procrastinate and it's perfectionism, all of this stuff. You tell yourself or you set your alarm for something like two minutes. Whatever feels comfortable for you, like you, something like that you would be little. Whether it's five minutes or four minutes or two minutes, set your alarm or a countdown for say two minutes and tell yourself, I'm going to write my book or I'm going to start cleaning my closet for two minutes and that's it. I will do nothing else. Or for four minutes and that's it. I'll do nothing else. I'll do another four minutes or another two minutes if I feel like it. But if I don't feel like I'm done for the day. Two minutes, four minutes. And then once you do that, you'll find that the two minutes, there's so much baraka in it. And you've started to make progress. You started to make progress on that thing. Yeah. Um, cleaning the closet, doing a class, whatnot. Keep lowering the, the goal until you do something. So let's suppose we're talking about a class. Let's suppose there's a class you registered for. It has online videos and stuff like that. And you say to yourself, I'm going to sit down for one hour every day. And now it's been like three weeks. You haven't, you haven't logged in or something like that. So you tell yourself, you know what? I'm going to log in and I'm going to watch for five minutes and five minutes only. And that's it. I'm done for the day. So you're making progress rather than telling yourself, I want to complete this. You know, when I was memorizing Quran, little kid, and I found a lot of people when they start memorizing Quran and they have this attitude of, um, I want to finish the Quran so that I can be a hafiz, I find, I found that those people don't succeed. And it's similar to people who are, um, they go to a karate class and say, I'm here because I want a black belt. That, um, because there's so much effort and a journey that goes from that first class to maybe four years later, six years later, when you finally get the black belt, that if your goal is only the end result, if that's the only goal is the end result, then everything um, between you and the end result is a burden and a hindrance. It's blocking you. So this showing up every day for karate class is actually blocking you. That's why people get frustrated. What am I gonna get my black belt? What am I gonna get black belt? Or if they're memorizing Quran, they could be like, oh, when am I just gonna be a hafid? When am I gonna be a hafid? I just wanna be a hafid and get this, get this over with. You've gotta love the journey because the end result is only like, what, 1% of the journey is the end result? You made it to the end, like, wow, great advice. Uh, sorry, uh, wow, you made it to the end, like, good for you. That's only 1%. You've got to love the journey. If you love the journey, then you'll make it to the end. So when I was memorizing Quran and I was on the journey, every class and every page of the Quran that I memorized made me so excited. And I was like, here's, you know, 12 year old Muhammad Sharif. I memorized one page of the Quran and I'm like, wow, I memorized one page of Surah Al-Baqarah. I memorized two pages and I go like, wow, I memorized two pages of Surah Al-Baqarah. Memorized three pages. I'm like, wow, I memorized three pages and four pages and five. Every single class, I kept saying to myself that I'm so happy for the journey. So you want to fall in love with the journey not the end result. This is a reminder for me because even as I'm saying that, I'm looking at things that I've been procrastinating or I've been throwing perfection as it, perfectionism in it. And, I, and I'm saying to myself, yeah, the problem is that I keep focusing on completion and that's not the goal. The goal is to love the journey. How do you love the journey? And if you love the journey, then you'll make it to the end, inshallah ta'ala. The other thing that I want you to do, uh, the final advice that I'll give you here is um, 
pat yourself on the back and really celebrate when you do make these make this progress. I have this um, challenge, a bring it challenge. I call it bring it. It's a course that we teach, but in that um, the concept is you get a whole bunch of things that you need to get done. Give each of these items, if they get done, give yourself 10 points. And the aim is to try to get 100 points in a day. So what I would do when I come to the end of the day, if I hit 100 points, normally if I'm not counting, you know, 100 points meaning giving everything that I got done on my to-do to -do list, um, um, if I get 100 points, I completely celebrate, like day well done. But on days when I'm not counting, I always feel like, oh, I could have done more. And I always come to the end of the day like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't perfect. I didn't get everything done, blah, blah, blah. And that's not the right attitude. The better attitude is you want to come at the end of the day, make the goal, you know, make it challenging, no problem, but make progress. And at the end of the day, tap your shoulder, tap yourself on the shoulder and say, I made progress on this. So let me give you some examples examples of things that we've mentioned and how to do make progress. So if you wanted to clean your closet or clean the room, instead of telling yourself that I'm going to clean this closet completely, tell yourself I'm going to put my alarm for four minutes and clean as much as I can for four minutes and then I'm done. And then the next day, you know, how, just make a habit. I'm just gonna keep cleaning this for four minutes every day and then I'm done. If you're talking about writing a book and this is like some big thing that you're trying to do in one sitting, instead of telling yourself, I'll only be happy when the book is completed, tell yourself, I'm gonna sit down for five minutes, put my alarm on, um, my countdown timer, I'm gonna sit and write and enjoy the process. Get myself a nice cup of hot tea with milk or without milk and um and just start writing for five minutes and then when i'm done i will enjoy the experience yes so we're talking about loving the journey not necessarily hyper focused on the end result if you have a class that you've uh, that you've registered for and it has these videos that you haven't completed or something like that then tell yourself instead of me focusing on completing this class let me enjoy you know five minutes of this class 10 minutes or maybe 10 minutes is too big maybe even five minutes is too much and you tell yourself if five minutes even five minutes is too much tell yourself i'll only do it for two minutes back in the day when i wanted to um read more quran i started telling myself that i try to make it the minimum i will open the mushaf and read one ayah of the quran like can you at least do that muhammad make a habit open the mushaf read one ayah and then one that one ayah becomes half a page becomes one page becomes a quarter becomes one juz you just start building up this habit and routine wallahu ta'ala alam is there any questions about perfectionism i will give you 30 seconds to post your questions if there's no questions I will just sign out. Meanwhile, I will Google quotes on perfectionism and find some words of wisdom for you to end this, <laughs> this amazing. Ah, uh, yes. So this quote says, perfectionism is just an excuse for self-criticism. Okay, so Wasif has question says, if you have three big draws that you want to make and you need to give solid attention to each one, should you just make each one with general kind of broad wording so that you say the draws? Yeah, sure. So what I what I recommend, Wasif, or what I've been saying is that if you think of a meal, sometimes there's a snack, some there's sometimes there's fast food, and sometimes there's this long gourmet meal. And I tell people for du'as, there are times when you have like just time for a snack. Make your du'as snack format. Or sometimes it's like, you know, after a prayer, just have, you know, a few moments, you can make it like a regular meal type of du'a. And then other times you could be awake at night, you've got all night long and you want to go at really long with these du'as. So it's not that you do one or the other, have three versions of your du'as, um, snack, regular meal and long gourmet meal st um, size and make du'as like that.
this comment from Yamam about uh, memorizing drama into a game. So gamifying the journey. Um, a word of caution about gamification. So uh, Yamama, I've because I'm I'm excited about gamification. I'm taking a course on gamification and stuff like that. One thing about gamification is, um, if if the purpose of what we do is the game, then a lot of times it belittles the um, the higher purpose of what we're doing. So for example, somebody's memorizing Quran, I'll give you an example, like somebody's trying to go pray Fajr in the masjid, and then they start gamifying it. So they say, hey, if I go for Fajr, I'll give myself 10 points. If I get 100, you know, 10 Fajrs in a row, then I'll go out for breakfast at IHOP or something like that. Um, the problem with that is Fajr is such a noble and it has, there's so, and it's, and it's difficult, <laughs> you know, it's like changing habits, sleeping early and stuff like that, that a, a, um, a breakfast at IHOP after 10 days, after a while, the person's like, I don't care about breakfast at IHOP and I don't care about these random points. So gamification, even though a lot of people try to apply it to change customer behavior or consumer behavior. It, a lot of times it doesn't work. So there has to be more to it. And that goes into like the why. Why are you doing this? Why do you care about it? And that's the love of what you're doing. And then on top of it, if you love what you're doing and then you put some game um, gamification elements on top of that, that's great. Some of the best gamification elements are um, gamification when you're working as a team. So um, like World of Warcraft, they're like masters of gamification. How do you get people to play so long? It's an online virtual reality um, type of, I don't know if it's a virtual reality, but. Um, and, and they found that getting people to work as a team is much more motivating than leaderboards or one person winning and one person losing. That's just a side point. But Jazakallah khairan, so I'm good. So uh, Bushra says, my daughter tries to be perfect in everything. How do I stop her? <laughs> How do I stop her as she stresses over things? <laughs> I just brought to mind one of these, uh, one of these villains. How do I stop her from being perfect? Um, uh, I would say, Bushra, that this, this feeling of being perfect it applies to all of us, not just your daughter. We all, when I said earlier, I'm like, some people have this thing about they want their rooms to be um, perfect. Maybe your room is clean or not. What about your closet? So we all got a room that may be perfect, but a closet that is not. So we're all doing this in some kind of capacity. Um, uh, what comes to mind to maybe help her is going through this like a five step. So what would happen if you weren't, if you didn't do this perfectly? What if you didn't get 100% on this exam? And then there was like, well, if I didn't get 100%, then, you know, my teacher's gonna be mad at me or something like that. Okay, so what? Then what would happen? And then and like, if my teacher's mad at me, then my teacher will hate me. And then so what? Then what will happen? Then if I keep doing this, then, you know what? I'm not gonna get into university as if, right? Then what will happen? And you kind of take them along the journey of what are, or why are they doing this? What is the perfection? perfectionism leading to and go like five levels and they might find the ridiculous like once you kind of like spread it out why is the person doing this then they can see for themselves look nothing bad happens if i'm merciful with myself a lot of that's just a quick answer but of course there's more to perfectionism than just that Nuren says, what about when your peers are progressing super fast, but you cannot match their perfectionism? You cannot match, it's not perfectionism. So if your peers are moving really fast, so let's suppose, this happened to me actually in Medina University when I was studying in Medina and I was really young, I'm 18 years old, 19 years old, and there were um, students who actually came from their countries, like from Algeria, who actually had 
um, Islamic study degrees before they came to Medina. They were doing double degrees. So I would be sitting in an exam for an hour and 45 minutes. It's a two hour exam. And these guys are leaving after 15 minutes. And it's very, you know, what you're talking about, like somebody's progressing super fast. And then you feel like, oh, I need to be perfect to be like them. So I told myself that um, even though these guys are, are, you know, finishing the exam so quickly, number one, they're losers because they're doing double degrees. And I'm not doing a double degree, so I pat myself on the back for that. And number two, I'd say just because this person finished their exam in 15 minutes, um, inshallah ta'ala, it'll take me an hour and a half, but in the end, we'll have the same mark. So I told myself. Or somebody is strong in one area and not necessarily strong in another. So for example, the same person, maybe this Algerian student who got such a high a mark and I got such not a high mark, uh, at the end, maybe I open the Islamic Institute and this student wants to work at my institute because I was better at managing, you know, um, building Islamic organizations and this person wasn't as good. So you see, you can be better at, what, at one thing and that other person is better at something and then you team up. Hence, that's why motivation, you know, like I said, working in teams is better than trying to just, um, trying to beat the other person. Nice question. One last question and we will be done. I'm just trying to find that question. <laughs> Don't know, I'm not quite sure. So this is interesting. This is a it's kind of like a different somebody was saying, um, why do you have more sisters taking your courses, i.e. visionaries? I don't actually believe that to be true. I think there's a lot of sisters that take our courses, but there's a lot of brothers that take it as well. I think that you might be coming to this conclusion based on who talks more. So sometimes, you know, let's suppose, let's suppose we're here on the live, there's a hundred people, and then you might be seeing there's sister, sisters, like there's a lot of sisters, but there's brothers here, they just don't type. It may be not their nature, they don't like um, chatting and talking as much, or they like to talk in different, um, in different um, scenarios, like, I don't know, maybe if it would, they were playing an online game and they were chatting with other buddies, they would chat more. So, Mukhtar, we've actually done um, stats and uh, it is actually kind of 50-50. And there are other courses that I've done where there are more brothers than sisters. When I taught Nishiro, Nishiro, which was like business building, Muslim, you know, social entrepreneurship, um, that actually had more brothers than sisters. So just for your information. All right, guys, let me end with a really cool quote about perfectionism. Ah, yes, here's a good one. So in, in conclusion, here's my amazing quote, perfectionism is the mother of procrastination. <laughs> Perfectionism is the mother of procrastination. Zakallah khairan. Until we meet again, my friends, tomorrow at the top of the hour, 3 p.m. New York time, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.